Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video, we're going to be expanding our lighting equation a little bit to give it a little bit more, you know, realism to it, make it a little bit closer to what reality does. And we're going to do that by including this thing called specular reflectance. And if that term confuses you, just think of it as reflection. There is a difference, and you'll see that as we go along. So, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start by changing our material class, because, you know, things have different levels of reflectance. You know, metal is shinier than wood, so that's where we're going to place our reflection factors, which I'm going to call private float specular intensity. That's going to be how intense the reflection is, and private float specular exponent. That's going to be how wide the reflection is, if that makes any sense. So, am I reflecting the light in this tiny focused beam, or is it more of a widespread reflection? So yeah. And with that, I'm going to create a new constructor, which I'm going to start by just copying and pasting that. It's going to call this with texture and color. And our full constructor is now going to take in a float for specular in if I can spell it right, intensity, and specular exponent. And there. So now I'm going to copy and paste because I'm lazy. This dot specular intensity is... What? Come on. Call on keyboard, work for me. There we go. And this dot specular exponent is just assignment, nothing fancy. So there. And now you're crashing for me for some unknown reason. What is... Oh, semicolon. Now you should be working. Um, but, oh, I didn't change this. So default specular intensity and exponent values should be... I'll go with 2 and 32. And we can change that later if we don't like it. So those should just be the defaults, and if we don't like it, we can change it. This dot specular intensity equals specular intensity. Why not? Oh, because I spelled it wrong. Of course. And with all that, we're going to create getters and setters for both of them at the end. At the end. And with that, we now have all the material information we need. And really, all now we have, all we're going to have to do now is send that to the shader in our Fong shader, and then we'll be done with the Java code part of this whole segment. But first, let's actually write some of that shader code. Now, we're going to start off in our vertex shader, not because we're actually going to do any real calculation here, but because we need to send some more information to our fragment shader. And in this case, that's the position. Not the full transformed and in-perspective position, but the actual world position, where it is in the world, without the projection. So, I'm going to output a new vector3 called world position come on there we go shift is actually working now called world position 0 and world pos 0 is going to equal our transform to basically what our normal code is except with our position instead of our normal and we're going to be sending 1 as the w component because that way we multiply it by matrices like this it doesn't destroy the W component. So yeah. And with that, that should be everything we need to do in our vertex shader. And in our fragment shader, we're going to take in a new vector, th not int, in a new vector 3 called world pos 0. So essentially, well, the data we've t given it from our vertex shader. And we're also going to take in two new uniforms, which... Yeah, I'll put right, I'll put right here, why not? It's going to be new uniform float specular intensity. And uniform float specular... I'll call it power, because that's easier to type than exponent. And with that, we now have all the data to actually do our specular reflection calculation. So, in our calculate light method, we're going to go into our diffuse factor calculation thing here, and we're going to add 
all the calculation we need for specular reflection. So, here's how this is going to work. We're going to be calculating two vectors. One's going to be whatever vector between the pixel we're calculating and our eye, our camera, so whatever direction that is. And the other vector is going to be the direction that the light actually reflects off the surface. And what we're going to do is we're going to compare those two vectors so that the closer they are, the more close the light reflection direction is to the direction we're actually looking at the, this pixel, the more intense of a lighting effect we're going to get. So that's the way this is going to work. So first, I'm going to create a vector 3, and I'm creating it if our diffuse factor is greater than 0 only, because if it's less than 0, then we're not getting any light. So how can we reflect if there's no light? So yeah. We're going to create a vector 3, direction to i, this is going to be the first of the two vectors, and this is going to equal our i position, whatever that is, minus our, what's it called, the world position, so world position 0, because that's where our, what does it come on, <laughs> that's where our pixel actually is located in the world, so, and we're going to normalize this because we only care about the direction, not the actual distance and whatever inf other information there is. Other vector 3 is going to be vector 3... I'll, well, actually, before I do that, let's back up a bit. I don't actually have an eye position. This is going to be our camera, but, well, how are we going to get that? So this is just going to be a uniform. Nothing fancy. We're going to send it a uniform vector 3 eye position. So we're going to tell it where the camera is. Now, our second vector is going to be vector 3. I'll call it reflect direction. And this is going to be, it's going to be normalized like before. But here's the question. How do we calculate what direction our light reflects off the surface? Well, if you saw that brief highlight earlier when I was typing reflect, you might guess that GLSL has a reflect function. And you're right! GLSL includes this function called reflect, which takes in some incoming direction and a normal, whatever the up direction of the surface is, which we also have. And from that, it will calculate whatever direction light would reflect off that. And I'll talk more about this function when we implement it in our actual Vector3 class in our Java code. But, there you go, this is the code for now. So yeah, and now that we have our two vectors, well, now we need to actually compare them. So I'm going to create a float, specular factor, and how do we compare them? Well, these are two normalized vectors. The easiest way to compare them is with the dot product. So, I'm going to do dot between, well, yeah, direction to i and reflect direction. And with our direction to i and reflect direction, this will give us, well, the cosine between these. So it'll be 1 if they're exactly the same, and it'll get, just get less and less and less as they sort of diverge. And there. And one final thing is I'm actually going to change this, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase this by our specular exponent. So I'm going to do pow between specular factor and specular power. And the reason I'm going to do this as well, because that takes into account our specular power. And yeah. And with that, all I really have to do is say if specular factor is greater than zero, so if we have more than zero, then we're actually going to create some specular color based on this. So. We're going to start off with a vector 4, call it specular color. It's going to start off as vector 4, 0, 0, 0, 0, so just absolutely nothing. And if our specular factor is greater than 0, then what we're going to do is we're going to set our specular color to a vector 4 of base.color and 1.0 times our specular intensity, so however intense our specular is, times our specular factor. 
And with that, all we have to do is return our diffuse color plus whatever specular color we might have. And with that, that completes our new lighting calculation. We now have specular lighting, in theory. So yeah, all we have to do now is minimize this, go into our fog shader, and set all those uniforms we had in there. In our fog shader, we're going to go down here, and we're going to add some new uniforms. Add uniform. We're going to add one for specular intensity. Add a uniform four, specular power, and add a uniform for eye position. And there. So now we have all our new uniforms added in our shader creation. And when we update the shader, we're going to have to update these new uniforms. And actually, since I did change it in my shader, I'm going to change this to specular power. Just because, so specular power, just change it everywhere. If I Come on, there we go. And get specular power. It's going to return specular power. Set. Okay, set specular power. It's going to say specular power. And there. I could have used refactoring tools, but I was lazy. And there. So now we go back to our fog shader. And we're going to set our uniforms based on, well, the material property. So. Gonna set specular intensity. If I, there we go. To material dot get specular intensity. If ah set uniform F. And I suppose I could move that down here. Why not? So set uniform F specular power to material dot get specular power. And with that, that gets me that set up. All that's left is eye position. So finally, set uniform uh, eye position to transform dot get camera dot get position. And with that, that should change our fog shader so that now we have all well all the appropriate calculation. We should have specular reflection now. So, let's test. So, if I go to my game class and run, then, hey, look at that! We have a little dot of specular reflection, where the light reflection is reflecting directly back at us. Now, granted, the values I have right now probably aren't the most realistic for this basic pyramid thing, but you know, hey, you get the idea. If you look at something that would be more appropriate to be reflective than this sort of checkered pyramid, this really is a neat lighting effect, and it looks pretty cool. So, yeah, there you go. That's specular reflection. It's working just fine, and yeah. So, with that, I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned, and I will see you in the next video. Tell them.